Did I start it? Okay, we're starting a new subject, which is quantum numbers. Oh, and I just did orbital, so uh, that's good. Quantum numbers. I did a little bit of quantum numbers already. You know you have N, L, M sub L, M sub S. Let me just give you some possible questions that could come out of this, okay? Uh, let's pick a number. You want to pick a number for me? Three. That's fantastic. That's exactly the number I was hoping you would pick. Okay. Let's say n equals three. Let's say n equals three. What could l be? It can be zero, one, or two. Zero, one, or two. If it's zero, that's three s. If it's 1, that's 3p, and if it's 2, that's 3d. Okay, what could m sub l be? Can it be 0? It can be plus or minus 1. Can it be plus or minus 2? Yes. How about plus or minus 3? No. It, it can't go higher than l. It can't go higher than l. Okay, how many m sub l values do I have? Well, a total here of 5. So if I had a 3d, I would have five values. That means there's five orbitals. D's have five orbitals. If I had 3p, how many m sub l values would I have? Three. Zero plus one minus one. And there's three p orbitals. Every m sub l value is one orientation in space for an orbital. So there's three p orbitals means there's three orientations for p in space. Okay, if you have three s, how many m sub l values? One, and there's only one s orbital, which hopefully makes sense. There's only one way to orient a sphere, and that, that's it. So three s only has one sub m sub l values. How many, if I would have three d, all these values, there's five values, how many total electrons can go in these orbitals? Ten, because each of these, I'll write a different color, each of these can have a plus or minus a half. So you could have, for example, if I make a little table here, just for fun, m sub l and m sub s. If n is 3 and l is 0, and m sub l is 0, then you could have a plus 1 half here. That's one set of quantum numbers. Or you could have 3, 0, 0, minus 1 half. That's another set of quantum numbers. Or you could have 3, uh, let's pick, uh, it doesn't matter, uh, 2, sure, 2. Can you, if, if uh, L is 2, can you have a 0 here? Yeah, so this could be plus or minus 1 half. Or you could have 3, 2, minus 1, plus 1 half. So these are all possible sets of quantum numbers. Okay? If N equals 3, how many total electrons will I have? Oh, that's painful. Well, uh, I could have 0, 1, or 2, and then this many. I'd have, at least if, if I had a 3D, I'd have a total of 10 electrons. 3P would be uh, 6 electrons, and 3S would be 2 electrons. Okay, so whatever the sum of that is. So these are one set of possible ways to ask a question. Another way to ask you about quantum numbers is as follows. Uh, let's say I have a 3F. Is that okay? What's N? What's, what's L? 3, is that okay? No, that's bad. These two cannot be equal. That's horrible. Don't do that. Either you'd have to increase N by like that, or 5F is okay, 6F is okay, or you'd have to decrease L. So you could have a 3D, or you could have a 3P, things like that. But this combination will not work, not allowed. Okay, let's go in 8S, where M sub L equals minus 1. Is that okay? Okay, N <coughs> equals, in this example, 8L, 0, and then M sub L minus 1. That's not okay. You see why? Because M sub L cannot be larger than L. In order to have an M sub L value of minus 1, what must L be? 1, one or 
No, what, what must L be? L could be 1. What else could it be? 2, all the way up to infinity. Okay? You can have a minus 1 value. Okay. Let me do it one more way. Is that okay? Uh, let's say I had L equals 2. I want to know all other quantum numbers. Well, if L is 2, what could M sub L be? 0. 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. What could M sub S be? Plus or minus 1 half. Uh, what could N be? 3, or 4, or 5, dot, 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 up to infinity. Because as long as N is bigger than L, we're okay. All right?